best life. I want to be the very best that no one ever was. Who here wants to be their very best? <laughs> you guys don't want to be the very best. Of course, everyone here wants to be the very best. That's why I was inspired by Dr. Justine over there. For your information, Dr. Justine has made three books. Three books in the span of his lifetime. And I was inspired by him to make my own book. It's related to the first line of the Pokemon theme song. I want to be the very best that no one ever was. I have decided to entitle this book, Best, The Ultimate Guide to Being Your Best. Now, this book can be pretty inspiring. This book, this book can contain a lot of contents that can inspire you. That's why I decided, hey, why not try making a book? If, it, if my first book was to be made, it should be something influential. It, it should be something interactive. It should be something that captivates the reader. But then I realized, Look at the title, Best, The Ultimate Guide to Being Your Best. Isn't that pretty cliche to you? Like a lot of books, or a lot of books that you see starts with the unofficial guide, the official guide, the ultimate guide. They're all guides. There are so much guides that can lead you to being your best. That's why I decided, you know what? Scratch that. Get rid of the idea. No, I don't want to make that book. If that book was to be influential, let's not put a cliche title. That's why I decided to rename this book. I rename it Best. The Unofficial Guide to Being the Worst. Now, why did I name Why did I name this book like this? Well, I'll I'll explain it to you. Now, what's inside this book? Of course, there should be an introduction. This is the introduction of the book. This book is a step-by-step -step guide on how a human being blah, 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 blah. Normal stuff. Introduction. But then, if I were to make a book, I want this book to be helpful from the very first page to the very last page, from top to bottom. It's an influential book. That's why this introduction, it may look like it's normal. Actually, it's not normal. Introduction. When I say introduction, what is the root word of introduction? Introduce. In being your best, you need to have an impact on the people you meet. That's why the first, the very first page of this book, the introduction, relates to introducing yourself. How? How can the introduction be related to that? Let's look at this line. The contents of this book are all factual information. Well, it's true. These are all factual information. That's why when you introduce yourself, it's important that you should be true. You should be a book that contains a lot of facts. In fact, every page of the book, every word in that book is true. In introducing yourself, it's important that you leave in an impact on who you really are. It, it, it's important that people know who you truly are. It's important that when you introduce yourself to someone, someone that you've never met before, like you guys, I've never met you before. Well, except for my classmates and the stuff here in BBC, but everyone here from Pepsi. I may or may not have seen you, but I don't know your life at all. That's why when I introduce myself, I am Joshua Bugay and I'm a student here. That's true. Hi, what, but what if I say, hi, I'm Joshua Bugay. I live in Burj Khalifa. Would you believe me? No. <laughs> no. That's why it's important for you to be true yes. because this can, this can initiate the trust that you build between the person. Next, the physical book itself was produced in a publishing house and not a confectionery store. Does that make sense? No. Why would a book be published in a confectionery store? Well, in introducing yourself, you shouldn't sugarcoat things. Think about a book that was made by gingerbread, sprinkles whipped cream and all over it. Would that book make sense to you? No. That would be a senseless book. It would mean nothing. That's why when you sugarcoat things, when you introduce yourself, you wouldn't make any sense. Yes, sure, the people might believe you. But if they discover the truth, do you think the, the, the words that you say to them for the first time is useful? 
Does that make any sense anymore? No, it doesn't. So it's senseless. Next, the author of this book had freedom to write this, and so do you. In introducing yourself, introduce, introduce yourself however you like. You have the freedom to introduce yourself however you like. It's important when you, that when you first meet someone, when you first encounter them, when you first know them, when you first talk to them, every second of that moment, there should be an impact on that person. That's why you introduce yourself however you like. Whether you're shy, you're confident, you're outgoing, or you're not, you should leave an impact. And you should show who you really are when you introduce yourself. Now, let's move on, let's move on to the book. I would like everyone here to remember this phrase. This book is you. It's very important that you remember that phrase. You'll know it later. Now, after introduction, there will be the table of contents. Now, for the table of contents, we here know that we here knows that the table of contents should provide what are the pages of this book, the page numbers, what what is inside this book, what can we expect to this from this book. But then I realized if the introduction itself, the very first page of the book, is helpful, I'd want the table of contents to be as helpful as well. That's why I keep on thinking, what should I put in the table of contents? What should I put here? How could I, how could I make the table of contents a, nor a seemingly normal page helpful? Then I realized there's only one way of making this helpful. Do you see it? The table of contents should be a table. Now, wait, wait, wait. Sure. Table of contents. Table. They're connected. How is that helpful at all? And it's a table of contents. Where are the contents? Well, I decided that there should be only three contents in this table of contents. What you have, who you are, and where you are. That's the three elements. You might be thinking, table of contents. There's a table. There are the contents. Where's the helpful part? Let me explain. The first content is what you have. It's important that in life, if you want to be your best, if you want to be the very best that no one ever was, it's important that you should be content on what you have. It's important that in every aspect of your life, in every possession that you have, whether it's a skill, whether it's a physical thing, Whatever it is that you possess, you should be content on what you have. Who you are. You should be content on who you are. Yes, I'm talking in front. I have, I have this chance. I, I was given this privilege. Should you be jealous of me? No. Why? You have your own opportunities. You can be given your own chances. That's why it's, it's very important for one to be content on who you are. Why? You shouldn't be jealous of what others have. You shouldn't be jealous of who, who others are. Because you yourself, you are a miracle. No matter how harsh other people get to you or say to you. You yourself, you are more than enough to live in this world. Be, living in this world is already a high chance, a high opportunity. It was a very, very great opportunity that was given to you because you exist here. If you weren't given that opportunity, to be born. Would you be here listening to me? No. Of course not. That's why you should be content with who you are. Next, where you are. You should be content on where you are, not in a sense that, hey, I am, I'm in BPEC. I'm content. No, not in that sense. Where you are means the situations in life. You should be content on where you are in life right now. Let's say that one of you here had a million dollars. While the other one of you here had only 50 dirhams. Should you be jealous of the of the person that has a million dollars? No, you shouldn't be. Should the person who had a million dollars be jealous of the one who had only 50 dirhams? No, shouldn't be. Because where you are in life is not measured by how much money you gain. It's not measured by how long have you been successful. It's measured by how how you yourself have lived this life according to who you are. So it's important that you should be content on where you are because 
Where you are in life reflects on who you are. It reflects on what you have. It's all connected. Now, if you still don't get it, let me, let me just clarify again that this is a table of things that you should be content. Table of contents. That's how this page became up. Now, <coughs> moving on from the table of contents. <coughs> Since we already have the table of contents, let's actually go to the main part of this book that I'm planning to do. We'll call this page, the title page, the, art, the official, unofficial, step-by-step -step guide to being your best while being the worst. Let's move on to step one. Now, this is <coughs> step one. Believe me or not, it's step one. Now you might be asking, how is this step one? Do you see anything in this page? No, there's nothing. There, there's, there's nothing. There's, there's a nothing. number one. <laughs> there's nothing in this page. One. That's exactly it. The first step to being the best is acknowledging that the fact that no one starts at having something. Everybody starts at an equal page. Everybody starts on the same page, having nothing. Nobody starts by already having a million dollars, no? Nobody starts by already having a gadget, no? <coughs> Everybody starts on the same page, whether you are a boy, a girl, whether you are rich, you are poor, no. Everybody starts on the same page. And the first step to being your best is acknowledging that, that exact thing. You should be aware that you can't start something. You can't start moving along things if you already have something. You should be starting with nothing. And that's the first step to that's the first step to being your best. Now to the second step. Step two. Step two requires well, since it's step two, it requires the number two. That's step two. There should be two things that we should remember when being the best. Step two Two things. First thing, what to do. Second thing, where to start. Those are the two things you should remember. What to do. You should remember. Uh, you should be able to know what should you do in life. Whether you want to you want to start a hobby, whether you want to be the best in a certain area or passion that you like, whatever it is, you should remember or you should be able to know what do you want to do in life in order to strive for the best. Where to start? Where do you need to start? For example, I have a hobby of graphic design. Now, if I want to be the best in graphic design, where do I start? Of course, I start by learning how to get, or how to get good in graphic design. I should be able to learn where to start. Start by learning. Some people tend to learn from themselves. Some people te tend to learn from others, while some people tend to learn from the internet or whatever that is. The step two to be your best is knowing what to do and where to start. And it's important that you, you yourself should know what do you want to do or where to start to be the best. And let's proceed to step three. Step three requires which number? Three. Step two required the number two, step three, requires the number three. Any idea on what is step three? Except for those level three students. Any idea on what what kind of step is this? Anyone? No. Step three. Once you know once you know what to do, once you know where to start, you should find yourself going along the flow of life. It's important that we go along the flow of life. Let me explain to you. Do you agree with me when I say that the flow of life is something that we own, yet we can control? Do you agree with me? Yes. yes. Do you agree that the flow of life is something we possess, something we are on, yet we cannot change? Do you agree with me? why the flow of life. It's important that you should be in the flow of life because 
if you don't be if you if you are not in the flow of life chances are your aim your goals your objectives in life will be disrupted the flow of life do you know the saying let let things be things let things happen let it be it let it be when you let things be when you let things happen chances are things will go smoothly whether it's a bad thing, whether it's a good thing, whether you're going the right way, well, it's important that you should go the right way, whether your days are not good, whether your days are not bad, it's important that we should, we should be staying in the flow of life. The next step, step four. Once you are in the flow of life, it's very easy, I'm telling you, it's very easy for an individual to move forward. Moving forward. You are in the flow of life. You know what to do. You know where to start. It's easy for you to move forward. Since you already know you what to do, since you already know your goals in life, since you're already along the way of reaching your goals in life, it's very easy for you to take the next step it's, easy, it's very easy for you to know what's the next step you should take. It's very easy for you to know to move forward along the, along the path that you are reaching for. And the last step to be in the best, of course, step five. Step five requires the number five. Now, let me find someone. Hi, Gerald. <laughs> Hi, Gerald. Hello. Here. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I just did? High five. High five. That's why step five is reaching this specific level. Reaching the high five effect. What's the high five effect? If you search, if you try to search this on Google or, or any search engine, the, uh, nothing will come up about the high five effect. Why? Um, I just made this up as I went along the way. The high five effect. The high five effect stands for the human interaction effect. H-I, human interaction. When I high five the both of you, Jerome and Michael, when I high five the both of you, was there an interaction? Was there an interaction? Yes, there was an interaction. Once you, yes, you know what to do. You know where to start. You are in the flow of life. You're, you're moving forward to striving your best. Once you are in that specific level, once you reach that step, you are in the high five effect level. There are five things that happens in this step, the high five effect. One is recognition. People will recognize what you are doing. People will recognize every effort that you are doing in striving your best. Second one, it will open relationships. It will build relationships. Not, just, not necessarily couples or anything like that. Relationships as in human relationships. Once people recognize you, it will open relationships that could build, that could build trust, loyalty, and every quality that an individual can have. It will build friendships that can grow strong and that could lead that could lead to support. The third thing, support. Once people recognize you, once you open relationships, once you build relationships, chances are people will be supporting you. Of course, I'm not saying that every human you interact with will support you. But the most possible case is for most of the most of the humans that you interact with, most of the people that you interact with. They will support you in striving your best. Third is, you will have a boosted self-esteem. Your self-confidence will gain. If people are recognized, chances are they will be motivated. That's actually one of our lessons here, motivation. And one of the motivations, one of the type of motivations is the non-financial motivations. Relating to what Adi have said, please and thank you. Thank you. Thank you is a simple gesture. It's a, those are two simple words. Yet it motivates you. It boosts your self-esteem. And lastly, 
of course, if people will recognize you, if you have open relationships, if you've built relationships, if if do if your boost if your self esteem will be boosted, of course the last thing is you will have fun in life. Who here wants to have fun in life? Who here wants to have fun in life? Of course, everyone wants to have fun in life. Whether you're a teacher, whether you're a staff, whether you're a student, or whatever you are, it's important that we have fun in life. <coughs> Those are the five results of the human interaction. That was the last step of being, of being the best. But then, you see, you might be thinking to yourself, where does this part come from? I thought the book was made as a guide to being the worst. If those were the five steps to being the best, where's the five steps of being the worst? Let me tell you. Those five steps that I mentioned, those are the exact steps in being the worst. Well, not exactly. It's the opposite of each step. Let's go back. Step one. Do you remember step one? Nothing. 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 Being the worst includes having something. Having something leads to being the worst. Not necessarily being the worst for yourself, but being the worst for others. Do you agree with me when I say that no matter what you do, there are still people in this earth who will hate you? Do you agree with me? Yes. 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 Of course. Yes. We can't satisfy each individual in this world. That's why part of being the best is accepting the fact that not everyone can think that you are being your best. There are still people who, no matter what that something you have is, no matter what that something you are doing is, some people will still think that you are the worst. That's part of being the best, accepting this exact fact. Now, step two was what to do, where to start. Where does being the worst from here. So it's still in the number two. Part of being the best is being the worst at what? By saying this, this thing. Tomorrow's exist. Who here has procrastinated in their life? <laughs> 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 Including myself from that, I, I, I myself uh, is a great. I can say that I, I am a great procrastinator. It's a bad thing, I know. That's why it, it's a bad thing. It can lead you to being the worst. But then, yes, you can procrastinate on your goals. Yes, you know where to do, uh, where where to start, and what to do. But then, do you think that action will be done immediately? Of course, there are things that could lead us to saying that, hey. It's fine, tomorrow's exist. But then, yes, this can lead you to being the worst, but don't you worry. Step three, do you remember this? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. What does this mean again? Flow. 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 When you are in the flow of life, chances are, do you get it? I turned it upside down. Not exactly. <laughs> In order for us to get this, let's add some dots. When you're in the flow of life, not every day is a happy day. Not every day is a day that you are smiling. Sometimes you are happy. Sometimes you are sad. <laughs> Let's say that. Okay. Let Let's say that one of you here is the happiest person in this room right now. Do you think you're the happiest person in the room right now? Yes. Well, some people say yes. Some people say no. But are we sure that tomorrow you will still be happy? Yes. You're sure? Yes. You're sure? Yes. That can change. <laughs> Maybe now you say yes, 
seconds later, you will say no. That can change. We aren't sure. Maybe we're confident in their words, but our words can, our words can be permanent, but our feelings can, can be temporary. That's why when you are in the flow of life, you should know the fact, or you should accept the fact that not every day is a happy day. Next step, moving forward. I said that when you are in the flow of life, it's very easy to move forward. But we shouldn't forget about the things that force us to stop. Wow. Have you encountered this situation wherein you want to achieve something? You have this specific passion in something. Yet, for example, your parents say, no, you should do this. No, you should do this. You shouldn't do that. That's bad for you. You should do this. Have you encountered that? Yes. Every day. Yes. That's why in striving your best, you should be expecting that as you go along the way, there will be forces. Forces that will drive you, that will drive you to stop. That will drive you to just give up your goals. You should accept that fact. You should be expecting this specific thing. Lastly, the five. The high five effect. Now, what's the opposite of nothing? Something. What's the opposite of happy? What's the opposite of high? What's the opposite of high? There. What's the opposite of high? No. That's why I call this, in being the worst, there is there is the high five effect. There's the low five effect. The living opinions effect. Are you agreeing agreeing with me with the fact that opinions are inevitable? You can't avoid opinions. In everything you do, there are opinions coming from your front, your back, your left, your right. We can't, we can't avoid that. That's why part of being the best is accepting these opinions. It's accepting the fact that no matter what you do, you will still receive opinions. Good, bad, for the better, for the worse. There will be opinions and they will always exist. Now, those were the five things, the five steps to being the best and being the worst at the same time. Now, let me ask you a question. Compared to how I showed you the numbers at the first, at the first part of this slide, do you notice anything different? Compared to how I showed you the first five steps to being the best, when I turned from being the best to being the worst, have you noticed five things? In those five things, there's one thing that were added. This was added. It was the asterisk. Now, when you are, uh, is, is everyone here um, doing their thesis right now? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, don't worry. Anyways, now, some people tend to put asterisks in the thesis and it would mean that there's a footnote, am I right? Yes. There's a footnote. Now, for every number, for every step in being the worst, there's always a footnote. There is only one footnote for each step. It, it is, don't you worry. Don't you worry. Why? Step one. There's an asterisk. Am I right? Something. Something, something, something. If that something can bring other people to push you down, then that exact something can bring yourself up. If there is always something for other people to look that or to say that you are the worst, trust me, that something is what can make you being the best. To be the best. That's why don't you worry if that something can lead you, can lead other people to make you look like the worst. Why? Because that exact something can change how they think of you. That exact something can bring yourself up. If only that something is something that you give that you give importance to. Not you shouldn't give importance to how other people look at you. 
give importance on how that something can change you, can improve you, can develop you. Step two, there's an asterisk. <coughs> tomorrow's exist. Yes, tomorrow's exist. But you know what also exists? Chances, opportunities. If you can't bring yourself to motivate yourself, to push yourself, to achieve your goals in this exact day right now, there are many, there are still many chances that exist, opportunities that exist that can motivate you to strive for the best. If tomorrow's exist, chances exist, opportunities exist. You have to discover those chances. Don't just leave tomorrow hanging. Don't just leave today hanging. Let today be a useful day. Let today be, let today be something. Let today be a day of discovery, a day of exploration. Yes, you can push your, you can push this day or you can push the things you want to do this day for tomorrow. You can leave them for tomorrow. <laughs> but never stop discovering things. Never stop finding things. Never stop exploring things. Because those things can lead you, can motivate you to being the best. Step three, happy, sad, happy, sad, happy, sad. As I've told you, you just have to accept that fact. That not every day is a happy day. But don't let that change what you want to do in life. Don't let that change where to start. Don't let that change who you are. Being happy is normal. Being sad is normal. Crying is normal. Expressing your joy is normal. As I've said, when you're in the flow of life, let things be things. For today, let's say that you are happy. Then the next day, you are sad. Let it be like that. What you, what you have to do, what you only have to do is let things be things, let things happen. Because if you let those simple sad days affect you, chances are you'll be ruin, ruining your own dream. Next, step four, forces. These forces can stop you, but you have to do fight these forces. It's easy to fight these forces because you know what to do. You know where to start. You're already in the flow of life. If you let things be things, let forces try to stop you. But just believe in yourself. You are a warrior. You are a fighter. You're a fighter of yourself. <coughs> Fight these forces for you to be the best. Step five, the low five effect. These opinions can bring you down. Am I right? Opinions can bring you down. Who here is easily brought down by opinions? You are easily affected by opinions of others. It's fine. You can don't be don't be shy. Be honest. Who here are easily demotivated by opinions? It's fine. It's normal. Thank you. It's normal to be brought down by these opinions. But you know what? You know what? These opinions are the words of others. They are merely words from other people's mouths. You are stronger than their words. What you want to do is much more better than what they say. What you think and how you achieve things, your confidence, your self-esteem, your faith, and your belief in yourself, those things are much smarter, much better, much, much more efficient, much more effective than what other people say. That's why these opinions, you should be keeping them and learning from them. Don't just be, don't just let these opinions be ignited. Don't please, don't let these opinions be something that can distract you. Let these opinions be some, rather than being a destruction, let these opinions be an instruction, a guide to being your best. And you know, those are the five steps, being the best, being the worst, and explain them. I was going to be adding a conclusion to this book. But you know what? I decided. Let's just close the book. Let's just close the book, this book here. Let's close this book. Let's not put a conclusion at all. Why? Do you remember the phrase that I asked you to remember? Again, do you remember the phrase that I asked you to remember? This book is you. This book is you. Let yourself conclude this book. Do not let others finish your own book. 
if you want to be your best, you know what to do. You know where to start. You know how to develop things. You, know, you are already in the flow of life. If you want to be your best, other people will recognize you. Other people will say good things or bad things to you. But if I were to give you something, it's that let you yourselves, each one of you, let yourself finish this very book. If you created your own journey, if you are in the flow of life, you already are in your own journey. If you want to finish this, then finish this to yourself. Why? Because this is you. This book is you. This book is something to be treasured. Something that other people can be influenced to. This specific book, you, each one of you are books. Books that can help others. Just like this book. Books that, are, that, books that can be beneficial to others. Books that can bring other people up will bring yourself up. And that, therefore, closes this book on my talk. Thank you.